Um, I remember after being in the hospital, like it was, it was a community hospital. So a lot of, um, people who don't have insurance access that hospital unhoused community, because, you know, it's the number one hospital in, in the whole state for trauma. There were times when I was ghosted by nurses and like had my medication stolen, um, and not like giving me my medication and going through that pain. And the irony of like being an advocate for people whose voices have been silenced or like impoverished and then also going through the mistreatment um, of like how it literally feels, whether you have, you know, no insurance or like however people view you Mm -hmm. or like, or insurance or insurance. It did, it did not matter. I was just, in this environment where the mistreatment was a part of the culture. I I started to think about the number of uh, poor folks who haven't been taught to advocate for themselves or never even had that, that space to know what it feels like to advocate for yourself or even having people to advocate on your behalf um, and feel that connection. Um, As people of color, we go through so much with the medical system, but then like on top of that and being in that type of hospital, like I can just, I can sort of imagine a little bit like what your experience was like, but it's really at this day and age, it shouldn't be happening, you know, but it still is, which is so powerful that you're talking about the advocacy piece because I, I, you know, the medical system, a lot of things go fly under the radar and are permitted in hospitals that should not be permitted. And then the thing is that the, the, the education piece is missing because a lot of people don't know what their rights are. Your doctor right. can plan a course of action, but you are entitled to tell them no. And you can advocate for yourself. And if you don't like your doctor, you can always advocate to switch hospitals, doctors, whoever. I, I think what you're saying is so important because, you know, most times people who hold any type of, you know, specialized role are deemed as people of importance and people who have power. Mm-hmm. Um, but just because a person has a role of importance doesn't necessarily mean that they have power over you Yes, is what you're saying that you have the power to decide what doctor you go to, what doctor you allow into your space to walk with you through your journey, Mm -hmm. uh, what doctor you choose to advise you on medical standings, et cetera. And I think sometimes when people, you know, are struggling with poverty, um, we tend to defer, you know, our rights and, you know, our voice to those who we deem as more powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we got to remind folks that, you know, you're power, you're just as powerful, you know, Yes. and resources does not dictate worth. Uh, You know what I mean? Like we all have a we all have worth no matter what so lo- social location we emerge from. Yeah. And it, there has been so much legislature to defend disabilities, but I feel like there's still so much that needs to be done. And the fact that the fact that um, people are still dealing with this is, is to me is like crazy, but um, just like kind of tell me how has it shaped your opinion about the rights of people with disabilities here in the States? Well, I mean, personally, um, I've always been an advocate of any uh, uh, persons that have been excluded or oppressed in some way. So my heart has always been open to um, creating space Mm -hmm. and margin uh, for for people to be their, their full selves in the ways, um, in the ways that they're, um, of, you know, able or, uh, afforded to, you know, wanting to see, uh, people who are living with a disability shine, right. Mm -hmm. In a way that is honoring to them. 
Um, but personally, after the accident, I started to um, really make the connection of how people value, like how people place worth on ability, like ability to show up, ability to keep a schedule, ability to do certain tasks, ability to speak, ability to go here, ability to go there. And I started to see how people almost disconnected or, you know, stopped talking to me as, as much because I wasn't able to perform those abilities. And it was very heartbreaking. Ugh. Um, and it all, all in many ways, it caused me to question my, my own worth, uh, in the beginning, because it was like, like, you know, am I worthy? You know, you start having these questions, you know, um, like my worth is my worth beyond what I'm able to produce. Right. <laughs> um, and so like, I really struggled with that. And then I was reminded uh, by one of my professors about how my worth had nothing to do with whether I was in a wheelchair or not. Yeah. Um, whether I was using walkers or not, mm -hmm. uh, whether it took me longer to do something or not whether I needed to rest my body longer uh, than I had before or not. My worth was just here because I exist. I'm breathing yes. um, and people love me because of that. Um, but it was a struggle because there were times when I would go out in restaurants. I remember this one time I was out with my family and I was using my walker. I mean, I mean, I'm literally trying to learn to walk again mm -hmm. and the doctors are not knowing if they need to do a third surgery. And this lady and her kid was just like looking at me and the lit, the mother was like making faces, like mocking me. <gasps> and the kid was, they were laughing at me um, and the table. And I, I remember my kids were there. And like, I just, oh I just broke down. And then I started to realize like every building does not have, you know, uh, ADA accommodations mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, try either whether it's walking through doors or like the restrooms or like access and, and seating or whatever it was. It's just like, it was a new world that opened up to me because I'm literally walking in, um, what it means to live with a temporary disability. And mm -hmm. it was just eye opening. Wow. <clears throat> yeah that's such a powerful experience and like kind of shifting your mindset from being completely able to do all these things to now having limited mobility and being looked at differently because you are now using um a walker or crutches rather you know, to, to move around. And the fact that that lady had the audacity, like it just yeah. really grinds my gears. And then the thing is that a lot of the time when people are disabled, they are seen as invisible by other people. And that's one of the yeah. things that I really want to drive home with my show is that even though somebody does something differently than you do, that person is just as valid, just as worthy, just as powerful, if not yes. more so than that as you. you know?